This is Philip H. Anselmo, and you are burning up on Hellbound. What's going on, everybody? It's your pal, Mean Gene from Hellbound. I'm here in Houston, Texas tonight with Philip H. Anselmo, Mike DeLeon of Philip H. Anselmo and the Legals. What's going on, brother? What's happening, Daddy-O? Yeah. Been seeing you the last few nights, huh? Long way from home, man. Glad to have you. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you. And uh, Mikey, how you doing, brother? Doing all right, man. Uh, last day in Texas and uh, ready to get out and uh, hit some other uh, parts of the U.S., man. So it's been pretty good, bro. Yeah, nice. Uh, we're on uh, the fourth day of the tour. I missed the Louisiana date, but, you know, hey, we're not all perfect, right? And uh, I got to tell you guys, man, choosing a mental illness as a virtue live is phenomenal. The new material coming out live is phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much, man. Yeah. Uh, they're doing a hell of a job, man. I'm, what is it, fourth show in? I'm still warming in there a little bit, but I'm feeling better and better each night. Yeah. Yeah. How's the new material been uh, for you playing it live, man? Oh man, it's been a blast. Uh, been been you know waiting to get you know these songs on the live front for a good little while. So now that it's finally here, it's uh, it's a good feeling and blistering sets, man. It's been been a lot of fun, bro. I tell you, the last few nights, uh, the crowd reaction participation has been absolutely amazing, uh, amazing. And, uh, you know, this this record is, uh, of course, you know, me being the super joint guy, you know, Pantera guy, of course, down, all the other great uh, bands you've been a part of. It's this, meant to be different. Yeah, this, it, it's, it's extreme and it's it angry. And uh, what went into the writing process on this new album, man? I just uh, really... Uh, dipped back into some old riffs uh, that were inspired by Morbid Angel probably m for the most part maybe early wave 90s black metal and then uh, I took a look at modernity and I I've been immersed in Australian death metal namely Portal so those were some big influences going in but at the end of the story I don't consider like my lyrics necessarily death metal or black metal or any of that shit so it makes us a little bizarre to categorize it is extreme it's fast rock but uh you know to try and classify us it's kind of tough yeah yeah it's it's definitely different and uh I was telling Miss Kate earlier that the first couple of playthroughs for me personally was, I was like, holy shit, what did I just listen right, to? You know what I mean? Right, but yeah. it gets groovier and it gets heavier the more you listen to it. Was that uh, kind of the intention there? Something to resonate with people? Both uh, of the illegals full lengths, that's exactly what I wanted to, I guess, have it be distracting and off-putting, I guess, the first time through. But weird enough to where you want to revisit and once you revisit you start catching the small little nuances here and there so uh it's not easy listening yeah. but um <sighs> what you gonna do about it yeah. there eugene yeah, yeah. what are we gonna do you're gonna keep listening to it man exactly yeah yeah now mike uh, you're traditionally death metal guy flesh hoarder your other band that you're in uh, how how was this a uh, change of pace playing the illegal stuff versus uh you know flesh order man uh coming into the band honestly i didn't you know didn't know what it to expect I, I didn't know what philip was gonna you know want to do but then when uh, i got into the jam room for the very very first time and we started working on you know he started showing me all the new songs to me it was just i, I always say it was just right up my alley it just felt so natural you know progressing from you know my texas style death metal into the louisiana style yeah uh, fill up you know grinding in and it, it was just a real natural fill and uh it's been a blast you know it's been uh, j just being able to you know add some riffs and a little bit of you know the you know my touch to the tunes or whatever man it's it's been awesome and uh yeah. you know it's it's, it's it's a good time man love love playing these tunes 
That's awesome. Now, uh, record's been out for a little bit, and uh, this is the first leg of the the new tour, and I have it on good uh, good word that uh, there's going to be a second leg coming around oh, yeah. in oh, the yeah. uh, maybe the West Coast direction. Yep. Is uh is King Parrot also going to be on that? Uh, Man, that's t I don't know. I don't know, but I would hope so. But that's yeah. a I guess it's a timing thing because of their Australian homes yeah. and you know yep. visas and how that works out. So we'll see. Yeah, good guys. Uh, they're out here. At great, great. Yeah. There power. you go. Oh yeah. Yep. I'm gonna buy a couple of shirts before I head uh, head home tomorrow. Man, gotta support the guys out there. Yeah. They're yeah. Awesome. And they're also on uh, House Corp, right? Yep. Yeah. They are. Now they've been out on the. Have they been out on the road with you before? With Super, Super Joint Super and Joint. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So they've been out with us for. A, Man, three, four, five tours maybe. So nice. Yeah. Nice. I also see you got a, a big date coming up in Mexico. That's a hell of a festival down there. But uh, you also got a. Are you doing a scour date? When you're yeah, doing? the night before I do scour, then I come back and do the illegals. <laughs> it's right. two two nights in a row, man. Wow. And uh, for those who don't know, scour is uh, super heavy, super extreme, man. It's it's dark and heavy, right? It's yeah. It's a different flavor of it, but. It is yeah. fast rock again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, from there, you guys, uh, South America's coming up, right? You guys got to South America and uh, possibly Australia going on? Yeah, we're going to be heading down to uh, South America probably like mid January and then uh, through like mid February. And then uh, we're going to come home and then we got some more stuff lining up in Australia in March, man. And uh, Definitely gonna be keeping busy, man. Don't wanna, don't wanna show any signs of stopping. Wanna keep the, uh, the show on the road, man. Momentum. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, have you been to South America yourself? Man, it'll be my very first time. Okay. I can't wait to get down there, eat some good food, and play some, play some shows for some awesome Latin Americans. They love the metal down there, yeah. so I can't wait to get down there and. You will eat good food, and you will be jamming your ever-loving ass off, cause they are awesome down there. They're great audiences. Wait, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I did. I didn't know. For those who didn't know, uh, Mikey was uh, previously with Mod, and I know you did some big festivals in Europe and stuff like that. So I wasn't sure first if you. First time I met you was in Europe. Yeah, first was time it? I met him. Yeah, I was overseas uh, playing a festival in Germany and uh, was just warming up on side stage playing some death metal. You know, just just doing my thing. Yeah. And then one thing led to another. I hooked up with Steven and uh, we're all Texas guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, and just a few months after that, just got the call to ask if I was interested in jamming with Philip. And you know, you can't say no to that, man. And you know, I was yeah. definitely want to jump on that. And I took, you know, took it, took it, you know, to to the best. And you know, I'm having the best time, man. Yeah. yeah. What What did you see in uh, Young De Leon over here that uh, that interested you in uh, recruiting him? Well. <clears throat> Was he playing a certain riff at the time that caught your ear, or was uh, it no. the style? Uh, actually, that, that was just really, for me, a personal thing, you know, meeting Mike. Hey, how you doing? And uh, really, when, I guess I'm talking about it, guitar for the illegals, mm -hmm. me listening to Mike play in, like, uh, like, say, Flesh Order, it's such a, to me, just for my ears, it's a different style. So it's tough to gauge what how he would be playing the illegal stuff till he was in the in the room. So really I didn't know until he was right in front of me and he had learned I guess most of the songs if not all the songs by himself and he asked a couple little questions here and there but man he took it and ran with it and added his own thing and that right there to me is big when you start adding your own little things i love it i love it i love it i love it so you know it uh, releases some of the weight from your shoulders right trying to trying to think of everything maybe because no, you are no, no. you are the professional you know no, not really man I, <laughs> fuck i thought we was professional <laughs> no but uh no man uh I look when I see. I don't think like that. I, okay. I look across the room and see Mike as a badass player, and yeah. you know I can't do what he does, and he's not a singer. So we got to compliment each other. So, fuck, man. Uh, the more he brings to the table, it does make my job easier, but not in the way that I think you were trying to articulate. Uh, for me, it's a bonus to have a guy 
add in his own stuff, add in his own bands, add in his own solos, etc., 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 and make it feel like it's a part of him as well, you know, because all that does is build the relationship for down the line, because we will write more music down the line. I know I can trust him with ideas, so I, it, it's, a, it's a musical relationship that uh, you just grow together. And I, so far, with me and Mike, so good, so excellent. I love it. Now, now, was the record written prior to Mike becoming part of the uh, band? Some Where, of it. Most, uh, most, some of it, most of it, I guess. Some of it. From, from my point of view on that, I would say... When I first jammed with them, I learned five songs that first weekend. It was just non-stop. And then I would say the other five to six songs, you know, that we worked on was totally, um, you know, collaboration. yeah, collaboration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah totally, because I forget how it went down sometimes. It gets freaking blinding because I was flip-flopping doing that and M minor, so it's hard for me to remember everything. But yeah, you're right. So Mike did okay. contribute quite a bit, right. yes. And, and then even the first five that, you know, that I had learned that the guys already had got going, they were really, you know, just great rough drafts. But even from there, we changed things, you know, bend things, and, you know, it all just became overall just one natural sound and feeling album, yeah. man. Yeah. So it's basically a group effort, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Who, I love it. Well, uh, Prior to Mikey coming on board, uh, who was co-writing with you? Who was? Uh... I, I was the only real writer, man. Okay. Uh, you know, on uh, the first record, Marzi did a lot of his uh, soundscape stuff, which yeah. is really impressive and, and and all that. But I think the vision was different for this album, and uh, man, it, ah, I locked out, man. Yeah. I really did find, but everybody in the band, man, I, I, such great people. Yeah down to earth easy to work with Absolutely. and man goddamn talented on top of it it's like uh i feel blessed yeah yeah it's awesome and uh it's thrown me off the last couple of nights because i'm not used to seeing steven with a guitar in his hand you know yeah, he's he's always slinging that slinging that bass and super joint and then yeah. i see him on stage and him and daily owner battling him back and forth and it's fucking amazing yeah steve's a natural guitar player you know he's filling in on bass is playing bass just jamming with us but yeah his real instrument's the guitar, and uh, him and De Leon, like you say, uh, riff dueling it up. I love it. Yeah, man. Yeah, how is it playing with Steven up there, man? Man, I spend many, many nights till past midnight sitting in a room. I'll jump on drums, and Steven's on guitar. I'll jump on bass. Steve jumps on bass. I'm on guitar. It's just... It's like my brother, man. I can I get in a room and he can play something and I can play something and it's just we vibe off right each other very naturally and he's definitely I, I want to stay. I was telling Kate this a little earlier at, at our at lunch earlier that uh, I'm trying to play as best I can for Philip, but I'm also trying to play as best as I can for Steve because I want I want Steve to be able to know that I'm there for him, you know. So it, it's been it's been awesome. Love jamming with the guy. Good dude. Yeah. Yeah. Now everybody's Steve's like that too, man. He's just one of them dudes that's super easy to jam with, and he's always got great ideas. So he and he plus he he gets it. He gets the vision. So he's awesome too. Yeah. He's quiet. He's quiet. Right with, yeah. He's quiet and a little elusive, but you get him up there on that stage, boy, and he's just tearing some ass up there. He, well, yeah. He's this is. His, very much his vision too so yeah nice now uh i want to ask uh, both of you a couple of oddball questions uh to kind of try to start to wrap this thing up a little bit uh it's the desert island question i'm gonna start with mike because i'm gonna give you some time to think no i just want the answer right now i don't it doesn't it could be different two minutes from now but well, i will be. i know it, it's what it's kind of like that for me too oh, yeah, you 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 got three albums to oh, take with you God. And they could be double albums because, hey, they're even longer, you know, but you got three albums to sit on a desert island and listen the rest of your life to you. What are they? Okay, right off the bat, I'll say Slayer, Rain and Blood, Morbid Angel, Formulas Fatal to the Flesh, okay. and then the oddball that probably no one will expect will be Depeche Mode's Greatest Hits. 
Nice. So I got all the hits on one CD. Can jam out by myself on the island and dance away. No one will know, man. Nice, man. <laughs> I think I think I think Mike, you're the first one that ever said a greatest hits album, and that's a smart move. That's a strong. Oh, that's know, a strong man. move. That's a strong move, Philip. Uh, that's tough to beat, man. Uh, but I would have to be honest with myself. And you ready for this? I am. I would go with Jimmy Bauer's greatest hits. Close. <laughs> I would go with a three disc set nice. of all the hits from the 50s through the 70s. Okay. Oh, God. Can I make mixtapes? <laughs> you can do whatever you want, God man. Damn it. <laughs> you like the oldies, though, huh? I love the oldies, and I love. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. I, That's a strong play. All right. Uh, then I, I guess I would take the birthday party uh, greatest hits. And um, how was that, by the way? The Beatles greatest hits. How okay. about that? All right. Fuck. All right. That's good. The birthday. The birthday. Uh, how was that, Nick, man? Nick Cave in the birthday yeah. party. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah man. Oh, you're talking about my birthday yeah, party? Yeah, somebody had a special date. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. That was Fucking great! For those that don't know, uh, Mr. Anselmo turned the big five zero this year, man. Ha! Look at that shit, huh? Yeah, yeah. you made. Yeah, you made it out there, huh? Yeah, I was there with uh, my girl Letty, and I took my boy uh, Iomi and Atlas. Man, we went out there and made a little family trip, and it was just a big, gigantic family, you know, get together for you know for the man's party, and uh, it was a very special night and a lot of uh, just good vibes in the air all night long, and ended it with a. Uh, awesome fireworks show and nice. out at Phillips and then yeah. after the fireworks it started raining it was just like meant to be man it was a really awesome Perfect. night man yeah, it was good times yeah. yeah I had this big King Kong poster man I had two of them his son is a King Kong fan and man I know what it, that feels like because I was a kid and the original King Kong was like the most incredible thing that I'd ever seen I think it was the first movie that my mother ever explained to me and I cried my freaking eyes out. So, man, I had this old ass print, King Kong print. I gave it to his kid. It was great, man. Dude, the look on his face, man. Oh, it was man. it was, you know, priceless, man. He was just a big big King Kong fan. He he likes to watch vintage King Kong videos. So it, it just made his night, man. Oh, man. That's that's so sweet, man. Oh, that, fuck. I know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me ask you just one more real quick. Uh, gloomy day outside. Uh, you're bundled up in some blankets, man. What horror movie do you go to first? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, the Old Dark House. James Whale film. Uh, it was 1944. Uh, for 45, right after Karloff had filmed Frankenstein, it was his very next role as Morgan the Butler. Awesome flick. I, so atmospheric. I, I would have to think Mario Baba thought very, very highly of that film. Nice. And James Whale. And that's, uh, you watching that on old VHS or what do you got it on? I've got it on every format, <laughs> man. I've got it on every format. Nice. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys' time. And uh, for everybody out there in TV land, uh, Phil H. H. and Samo and the Illegals and King Parrot, check them out. They're Midwest and Eugene. Eugene. And they're Midwest and East Coast in it. And then look for some late fall, early winter dates on the West Coast. Something like that. All right. And then the rest of the world, they're coming for you. Buy the album. Come see them live. You will not regret it. Stay heavy. Stay fucking metal. Mm -hmm.